I have this molecule. This molecule is called phenol. A pretty cool molecule which is found in a lot of things like tea, wine, medicine and its derivatives. That means that adding substituents at the other positions of benzene yields different kinds of uses. We call these molecules phenol derivative. So what we'll be doing today is that we'll be playing with the phenol molecule to get different kinds of phenol derivatives and check the acidic strength of these molecules. So we'll be comparing the acidic strength of these molecules. Let's check why is phenol such an acidic molecule. To check the acidic strength of phenol, we know that we need to eliminate the most acidic hydrogen out of this molecule. Let's first check where are all the hydrogens. Evidently, all the five places of benzene will have a hydrogen like this. And the sixth hydrogen is what is attached with the hydroxyl group. In the previous videos, we have studied how oxygen and hydrogen have a huge electronegativity difference because of which oxygen develops a partial negative charge, hydrogen develops a partial positive charge. This hydrogen is then attracted by a neighboring water molecule which is already there in a phenol aqua solution and this attraction is so that it goes away to make our hydronium ion which gives us our conjugate base that looks like this. This conjugate base is called phenoxide. The more stable a conjugate base is, the more acidic our molecule becomes. So if we say that phenol is a very acidic molecule, it must be true that phenoxide is a stable entity. I encourage you folks to pause the video and identify why phenoxide is a stable entity. The molecule of phenoxide has a negative charge which can be delocalized over the entire molecule. And the more there is delocalization, the more stable the molecule becomes. One thing we need to be careful with is that this molecule is not aromatic. Why is it not aromatic? First, I'll give you reasons why it could be an aromatic molecule. It has a continuous pi cloud, which means this negative charge and all the pi electron clouds are on the same plane. But because it does not follow Huckel's rule, which says there should be 4 n plus 2 pi or lone electrons, which in this case does not follow. We have two lone electrons here and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 pi electrons, which gives us 8 electrons. There is no value of n, which gives us the number 8. Even if I put n equals to 1, it will give me 4 into 1 is 4 plus 2 which is 6. If I give it the value 2, it will be 4 into 2 8 plus 2 which is 10. So 8 is not a number which follows Huckel rule. That means our phenoxide ion is not aromatic but it does but it shows some really great resonance. Here I've tried to draw all the resonating structures of phenoxide ion where this negative charge bounces into make a pi bond and then starts shifting the pi bonds of the benzene ring. As we go further down and look at all the resonating structures, I want you guys to notice where does the negative charge fall. It starts from the oxygen group and it starts from the oxygen group and then falls at first the ortho position. Just a quick reminder, ortho, para and meta are the relative position to an already existing group which is attached directly to benzene. In this case, this is the oxygen atom which is attached directly to this benzene ring and hence this and this position will be called our ortho group while this and this group will be called our meta position and this will be our para position. Now let's check where the negative charge falls. First it falls at the ortho position, then it falls at the para position and then it again falls to the other side but it's still the ortho position. 
this gives us the idea that the meta position in this phenoxide ion which is here and here do not get too electron rich because the negative charge never falls on these two positions in the following video we'll be checking out how this affects the acidic strength of some phenol derivatives okay so now that we can see that there is an extended delocalization of electron happening all the way from oxygen atom to the entire benzene ring that means this molecule is a pretty stable entity from here let's go and start playing around with the phenoxide ion i have two phenoxide ions and i want to start adding substituents to it i want to go ahead and try the first one which will be let's say methyl group now that i've added it to a para position let's add it to a different position maybe ortho position the same group interestingly this molecule that i've made is the conjugate base of a molecule called cresol so this is our ortho cresol and this is our para cresol or i should say the conjugate base of para cresol and the conjugate base of ortho cresol now that we don't have to make the conjugate base of the acids because we already started with the phenoxide ion let's start and compare the stability of these two molecules as i can see the only difference in these two molecules is the placement of our methyl group which means that the difference in its position will make a difference in its acidic strength i want you guys to observe pattern in which we arrive to the solution first of all let's find out the electronegativity difference between this carbon and this carbon let's see this carbon is an sp2 hybridized carbon while this carbon is our sp3 hybridized in our sp2 hybridized carbon the s character should be around 33% while in the sp3 hybridization the s character should be around 25% we know that as the s character increases our electronegativity increases as well so because the s character is more in this 33% carbon the electronegativity difference will be towards this side where this carbon will be more electronegative which means this will be pulling the electron from the alkyl group which is usually true alkyl groups are usually electron donating we write them as e d g electron donating groups all right so now that it sucks up the electron cloud from the entire methyl molecule we see that oxygen is also sucking the electrons from the benzene ring this is primarily because oxygen is a highly electronegative atom which attracts electron from its from its neighboring atoms oxygen as a whole can be given a name of e w g which means electron withdrawing group that means it will be withdrawing electrons from all the neighboring atoms it's important for us to know that the power of withdrawing electrons decreases as it goes further away from an atom so essentially for an oxygen to withdraw electrons from this para position carbon will be the most difficult or the least efficient so we can see because the methyl group is very close to oxygen it can suck up the electron cloud from this methyl and it concentrate an amount of the electron cloud towards itself so if i had to show it in some gradient it could look like this where there is some electron cloud but the maximum electron cloud is towards oxygen because it's electronegative I want you guys to pause the video and think if this will stabilize or destabilize this molecule. It's interesting because oxygen is such an electronegative atom which attracts the electron a lot to itself, but it still destabilizes the molecule. Destabilizing. This is interesting. How come a electronegative atom which can attract electrons to itself destabilize the molecule? Let me give you an example. Imagine you have Ferrari engine and then you fit it inside a Maruti 800. You can't expect that Maruti 800 to reach the Ferrari crazy high speeds. This is basically only because the body cannot allow it. Similarly, oxygen is a very electronegative atom, but 
equally a really small atom as well even though it wants to attract the electron towards itself it cannot hold the electrons that is why it destabilizes this molecule on the other hand in paracrisol we see that the methyl group which is an electron donating group is stuck at the para position the farthest away from the oxygen atom to withdraw the molecules that means the destabilization which will be caused here by maybe the least percentage will be way lesser than the destabilization caused in orthocrisol so we can say that the conjugate base of orthocrisol is less stable than conjugate base of paracrisol which gives us a good idea that orthocrisol will be less acidic than paracrisol